everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today I will be discussing Oppenheimer with the wonderful Bone Bridger. I'm so happy to have him on my channel. Um, we both saw the film quite recently. Actually, he, I believe, saw it today. Um, so he is uh, fresh off the film. I'm pretty fresh off the film. And we wanted to have a little conversation about uh, how fantastic this movie was. So thank you for showing uh, showing up today. And um, I got my well, you know, Yeah, no, you can. It was yeah. important that we, after watching, you know, Barbie, I needed to watch a happy movie. So Oppenheimer was my, you know, go-to happy movie, right? That's the order you're supposed to do it. Wait, right. did I do it wrong? Are you supposed to do the other order? Yeah. <laughs> I might've done that wrong, but yeah. we'll, we'll see. Yeah. I, fantastic is right. Yeah. Fantastic film. Yeah. I know we were both uh, fans of, of what we watched for sure. And I, I know I would love to hear your perspective on, um, you know, when you originally saw the trailer to your experience watching the film, um, anything that was kind of like surprising to you or better than you thought or, you know. Absolutely. So the trailer, I think, is really good. I, and one of my critiques of Nolan movies in the past have been the trailers are always good. Like with Tenet, the trailer was really interesting, and I really didn't like the movie. Like, I'll never watch Tenet again. There is not enough money in this world to get me to watch Tenet again. But Oppenheimer, I love that movie. I, I didn't even realize it was ending. And it was a long movie and I was worried going in. I had kind of told you guys, I wasn't very excited in a lot of ways. And I love that movie. I I think it, this is, this is crazy. This is a little bit biased, but I rank this number one as in number one movie, like quality ever. And, and I might be early and in 10 days I might change my mind, but it's, it's, I think it's in the conversation. Let's put it like that. I think this is deserves to be in the conversation of one of the best films ever made. Yeah, and it's interesting that um, I know you, you've you not loved uh, quite a few of Nolan's films. There's a few that I'm not the biggest fan of, um, but perhaps because it was a biopic, it, it was um, it, it didn't allow him to be uh, not as focused because it felt very focused and he was still able to play with time in the editing. Um, I thought the editing was absolutely incredible in this movie. Um, so it still kind of felt like his style, but a lot more contained. And I think it worked. I think that that's interesting. So like, it's still a Nolan movie and it's still his style, but he somehow still managed to do something. And this is where maybe I like it when he does stuff like this. So like he took Batman and he made one, one of the greatest trilogies, one of the greatest movies ever made a movie that's really beloved. He took Interstellar and made something that's really like thought provoking, but maybe not for everyone. I feel like he took this historical event and made an important movie, which I did not expect that. Like he managed to somehow make this. I would argue that if you take three scenes out, this should be mandatory viewing in school because yeah. it asks questions. It makes you think it's not deciding what you should think. It's showing you things and letting you decide. But I think it teaches a lot about humanity too. Uh, mm. Just blown away. Like the characters, those are real people. Like they, they acted in a way that showed you what those real people were like that were messy and flawed. And I, I don't know. I didn't realize I was in a movie. Like it, it's one of those things where you, sometimes you go to the theater and you know it's a movie. And then sometimes you're so, in, the story takes over and you don't realize what's going on. Uh, unless the pacing fails. And that might be the, the critique I'd understand the most with this film is some people, maybe the pacing you chop 10 minutes out of the film, 15 minutes, maybe it paces even better, but. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and we were discussing on, on your channel about uh, the, the rated R factor. And I, mm. I agree with you. It should be mandatory. Um, and we know the specific scenes uh, right. with Florence Pugh, uh, which were, uh, um, why? Uh, but I, I kind of was thinking about this a lot. Um, there was such a stark tr uh, contrast with how we viewed Florence Pugh's character as well as Emily Blunt's character and how Killian Murphy's Oppenheimer viewed both of them. And I think that like, you know, Florence Pugh is fully nude in this. Uh, you know, their sex scenes are very um, raw and mm -hmm. I, and very real. And then you kind of have Emily Blunt 
we never see them intimate, I believe, um, unless right. I'm wrong. But and she's always right, kind of fully dressed. And they made a point that yeah. it's not. Yeah. Yes. So I think that was a very interesting take because it really kind of felt his perspective on the two women and how he viewed them. Um, mm -hmm. But I agree. Like if you did cut that out, you, it should be mandatory in schools. Right. And and even just edited, you could even edit it to make it different. I think for the sake of uh for school stuff, but I also kind of love that Nolan did what he wanted to do. Like he said, I want to make this film this way. And the topic is something that, that needed to be shown. I, I think that that's what kind of grasped me is imagine Nolan, if he had done, you know, any kind of topic in the world. And we, we could talk about this comparison, Dunkirk. It's an important event. But it is nothing in comparison to what this was about. And how how he did it by focusing on the man and the characters around the man and the other characters going on and what was happening, I just think that that was done in such a masterful way. It's what Dunkirk never was. Dunkirk could never be this movie because it doesn't have Oppenheimer and Murphy. I mean, I mean that's really the guy that made it all work. I mean, yeah, it's Nolan. Yeah, it's all this. But that acting performance... Uh, it, it's one of those that like, if I was ranking all time acting performances, he's in it, he's in the conversation. He can't not be in the conversation. Yeah. And it's so nice. They got to, uh, he got to be a lead in one of Nolan's films. This is our sixth collaboration together, which is crazy. Right. So I thought that was just lovely to see. And, um, we, I know, uh, you were discussing that, you know, when the movie ended, you, you, it was like, oh my God, it's over. Um, I really love how they, showed at the end what uh oppenheimer said to einstein i thought that was yes. like really great and i love i forget yes. i forget who, who it was talking to to downey jr's character and he's like right. maybe they weren't talking about you right you know what i mean maybe they were talking about something more important important yeah and they yeah. were and the full circle-ness of like einstein was perfor was per uh portrayed really well mm -hmm. and and talk about like him and Oppenheimer being able to relate as what it meant to discover something and how they'll treat you later on. That was crazy. But then also them talking in the woods about, did they discover something that could end the world and Oppenheimer telling him, I think we did like the, I, I, my brain couldn't understand it. And it's why I think that people that see this movie need to understand that we did create something like that. And that's what this movie's about. It's it's not it's about the possibility. And then they argue over the morality of using it and who's responsible and who's to blame and is it good or bad. But either way, they created the thing that could do it. And I and I love that they explored that in a way which you can't leave you can't leave this movie being really like one sided on the other. Like I feel like if you came in biased, it would move you towards the middle where you're like, oh I don't you know, is Oppenheimer the good guy or the bad guy? I feel yeah. like you moved to the middle because I would have came in maybe even more negative. Like it's a bad, but I'm more neutral because of this film. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Why do you think he, why do you think Nolan wanted? Cause that's it in the top right here. This is the conversation. This is yeah. the defining moment of the film uh, that wraps it up. And I wouldn't have chosen that. Why do you think he chose them? I mean, they are most, the most, um, well, first of all, I love that, that, you know, Oppenheimer was a theorist. So mm. he's looking at every possibility, uh, whether he makes this or not. And inevitably someone else is going to make it first. So, Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, good point. And I think they were both, you know, in a sense, Einstein and Oppenheimer futurists in the sense where they really kind of had an, a really good grasp on predicting, you know, how the future uh, would lay, lay out. Um, which is why I think when Killian Murphy says to him, you know, uh, this could end essentially alluding to like a third world war or, or right, whatever, right. It's like it's not, it's just, just the beginning. I think that's what really gets Einstein like so down because I think they both are very, uh, astound and astute predictionists as far as the future goes. So that's really interesting. The idea of using their theory, the fact that they were theory guys and, theory you get proved wrong every once in a while and they kind of allude to that too mm -hmm. that, that, that was such an underrated part of the film i think for me i think that what surprised me the most about this experience was the excitement from the audience <laughs> I, they cheered at the end of that 
this movie is not a feel good, happy movie. And people cheered at the end. That's hard to do. This isn't Captain America and Iron Man. Like the movie doesn't end on a positive note, no. but the audience left on a positive note. I know. And I wish that had happened to me kind of because I actually, at, at the end, I kind of like started to like clap that no one else was. So I kind of kept it to myself. But then wow. as I was leaving, I just saw these groups of people and couples and like they were just sitting, just talking to each other about the movie. Like people had to talk about it as soon as it was right. over. You know, that is a great test of if, if in a day, are you still talking about it or can you talk about it? Like, I'm going to talk about this to every person I know for a week. So despite my excitement for Barbie and wanting to have a fun movie and kind of dreading the experience of a heavy movie, I felt more alive, more excited after watching Oppenheimer. And I think that's what I love about movies is that there's movies that are grim that have heavy topics that still you can still love them and they can still connection. I think it's about being real and authentic. And this is what I would say is Hollywood on a whole is doing a bad job of making movies like this. It's no one and it's a few other people, but a lot of people are missing the mark. I don't know if it's studio problems, it's individual, it's the remake culture. Like this is not a remake. It's so nice to watch something that's not sequel number 25 in the fast and furious saga, which I like those, but you know, Vin Diesel needs to move on to the Riddick prequel, which is Fast and Furious 12 or 13. So it all kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, I really think you nailed it. Um, everything you said was spot on. And I think that this weekend in general really shows for both films that people want originality. They want auteurs doing something mm -hmm. new. Um, I mean, the, whether you love or hate either movie, both of the films were made with a, such amazing craftsmanship and care and um you know so i, I think it's the, the audiences are hungry for that and i think you, everything you just said really highlights all of that really spectacularly um so but thank you so much for joining me today uh, i hope everyone uh watching had an as as fun as we did uh and as fun and go watch oppenheimer or don't even watch this until you see it because uh no spoilers <laughs> yeah go watch but. it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go see it. It's a highly recommended film. Maybe see it again. Uh, I think Bone Bridger might do that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, thanks so much. Uh, and uh, thank you all for stopping by and see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>